Good afternoon, everyone. We're going to call the June 5th, 2023 Board of Adjustments order. First of all, I've got a list of things I'm supposed to read to you. Um, first, uh, the meeting is split into two sessions. The first is the public hearing session, and then, the, then we follow with the deliberation session. In the public hearing session, the agenda item is called. The applicant comes to the podium. We ask you to give your name and address for the record. The public has the opportunity for comments. Only four may speak in favor of uh, application and four are against. Speaker is limited to five minutes, subject to the questions by the board. At a one minute remaining time, you will hear a warning bell or a beep, and then they'll so ask that you summarize your comments. Now, I have the discretion of extending it if we interrupt you and you don't get your full time. Uh, after opposition speakers come to the podium, they will allow you a two minute rebuttal, and then uh, we'll once again have an opportunity for questions. When you come to the podium, address the board. Don't talk to others in the audience or to the staff unless we ask you to do so. And uh, let's see here. In the deliberation session, we'll discuss the application, input from staff at times. Then we call for a vote. And if you have questions regarding the results of the vote, you can call 251-208-5895. Someone arises, or if an issue arises during the deliberation session and uh, things were not addressed in the public hearing, the chair, chairman and myself has the discretion to allow additional comments pertaining to those issues until they're resolved or a call for an application to be held over for discussion at future meeting. Occasionally, board members will recuse themselves. That, that, themselves, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're directly involved or they but they feel they may have a slight conflict or an appearance as such. Uh, five affirmative motions. We are a supermajority board. It requires five to affirm a motion, either in support or opposition. And the decisions of the board are final. And if anyone wishes to appeal, they can appeal the decision to circuit court. At this time, I'd ask you to turn your cell phones to silent or off. Same for the board. And a reminder to the board, turn your mics on when you make a comment or a motion. And then uh, with that, I'll start with roll call. Mr. Davis. Here. Mr. Golden. Here. Mr. Metcalf. Here. Mr. Mellon. Absent. Mr. Carroll. Here. Mr. Moore. Here. I'm William Guest. We have six out of the seven members present. It takes five to make a quorum. We have the quorum, therefore we can proceed. And I'll call for a motion to approve the agenda. Mr. Chair, entertain Mort a motion. Motion to approve, Mr. Chair. I have a motion. I have a second. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Agenda is adopted as presented. And we will go in order. Uh, this is 002443-2023. Bellevue Lane, 4218 Bellevue Lane. If the applicant will come to the podium, please. Your name and address, sir. Uh, hello, I'm Sean Kleinpeter. It's 4218 Bellevue Lane, Mobile. Okay, and you want to tell the board why we should consider your request for a variance? Yes, yeah, so we're looking to get a variance to build a uh, decorative wall and uh, driveway gate in front of our home. We live right off Airport Boulevard. Uh, we, not, I don't know if you can see the picture there, not 10 yards from the actual airport uh, road. Um, and we were hoping to do that inside the 25 foot variance, or uh, setback, sorry. A um, couple reasons. One, safety. Um, we're very close proximity to the road. Uh, we'd like to um, keep you know, people from just wandering off Airport Boulevard into our yard. I also have um, two teenage dodgers for that have it as a safety mechanism to keep people from just wondering. <laughs> That's right, something along those lines. Um, we think it will look pretty. Um, we're planning on doing it in a decorative way um, to make the yard, front yard look nice. And I'm hoping that maybe it will cut back on some of the noise coming up at Fort Boulevard as well. Okay. All right. Uh, questions of the board for the applicant? 
Oh, I did bring some pictures. Um, I had some uh, CAD uh, pictures uh, develop of what our rough idea would be of how the wall would look and um, structure and form. I do have a question in regards yes. to the pictures. Yeah. We see a number of various type of walls. Yeah, so I put those because those are all in very close proximity to our home. I mean, probably all within um, one or 200 yards of our house, and they are, I mean, probably not as attractive as we plan on putting on, but uh, similar walls in the same area, uh, all um, inside the 25-foot uh, setback. If you follow Mr. Morris's question, the walls, that, the pictures that you have that depict walls or fences? Uh -huh. Are those along airport or are they along side streets? Um, some of them are along airport and one of them is um, along a side street. Parallel to uh, airport boulevard, very similar to ours. Uh, our street is parallel to airport, uh, just set back off the road a little bit. Also, uh, you're going to completely enclose the property? Uh, no, we only plan on having it uh, go back to the front of the house the, to the front. Um, the back of the house and the backyard, um, it does abut against the, um, the golf course. That's a very pretty view. Uh, we don't want it to obscure our view or any of our neighbors' views, so we would, it would just be the front yard. Well, the plan was um, to have it eight feet in the front, and then as it comes back towards the front of the house, to scale it down. To oh, describe what you uh, um, the front facing um, airport boulevard where our mailbox is. Do we have other questions of the board for the applicant? Mr. Anderson, turn, if you will, turn your mic on. You're going to scale the height downward as you go toward the golf course? Correct. And how is that? From eight feet to what? Um, the, the plan would be to scale it down from eight feet to six feet to four feet, so along, you know, a third, a third, a third to the front of the house. Okay. Um, we've got a couple public comments regarding this application, correct? And one talks about uh, covenants. So how does this align with the neighborhood covenant? We cannot legally consider covenants. It's, it's, those are private contracts between the property owners, and we have no legal right to enforce them. Okay. Well, I'll follow this up with a different question then. Um, how are the neighbors as it relates to this? Have you had conversations with the neighbors? Um, I So the two... Um, lots directly next to the house um, are um, do not have homes on them. The one to the right hand side, um, I have not talked to the owner. Uh, to the left hand side is Caroline Hines, who's behind me, and we've discussed this um, at length. Okay. I've talked to other neighbors in the neighborhood about it, um, and everybody, no, no one has had any issues. Okay, and what's the hardship, one follow-up question, what's the hardship with the 25 feet versus the 10 foot that you're proposing setback from the property line? So um, that does get start to get very close to the front of the house is actually set back a good bit, but if you can um, see the picture, the, um, there's a garage that comes off the front and that starts getting very, very close to the garage and it's a little bit um, of an, it just kind of would rem completely remove the front yard, essentially. Okay. That completes my questions. Mr. Morris? Okay, did I hear you say that one of your neighbors you hadn't made any contact with in regards to this matter? Well, there's a vacant lot next to the, the home. Um, but as part of this proceeding, uh, all owners were notified of the request for a variance. Okay. Any further questions of the board for the applicant? Okay. Do we have anyone that wishes? Yes, ma'am. Sir, 
Turf, you'll have a seat. Your name and address, please. I'm Caroline Hines. I am, as Doug just said, uh, the house that somebody's pointing to right now. Thank you. That is that is my house. Uh, Sean and his wife are at 4218. That's the big lot. Next to there is 4220, which is a vacant lot to the left, if you will, which I own. My family's owned since the subdivision was developed in the early 1950s. The house on the next lot is my home. Um, I've been in contact with Dr. Klein Peter and his wife about all of this. We are um, not really adverse in the situation. Um, my comments are in the letter that you all have there that I wrote um, to the committee. The variance of 25 feet, of being able to put it within 25 feet, means they could put it right along Bellevue Lane. It may or may not affect me leaving my house, but it potentially would affect someone in the lot, the vacant lot between my home and the Klein Peter home, in that the entrance to that lot is almost immediately adjacent to the Klein Peter property line. We had a situation with a prior neighbor where they were parking stuff out there, and I can just, I, I could tell them we had a workman coming and going through the drive that I'm discussing, and I'm concerned about if it's if it's closer than 10 feet to Bellevue Lane, I'm concerned about that owner, and we come and go from there. I did, in fact, today come and go from the, the vacant lot, um, whether it would affect our line of sight as we pull out of that driveway. Probably from my house, it would not affect it, you know, 75 feet farther over, but I am concerned about when we ultimately sell that house or gift it to one of our daughters, that that could create an issue. Um, the other thing is the, um, the height of the wall, uh, they propose or they've asked for uh, eight feet. And I came down, when I came down here today, I came down Benton Spur from uh, Burns Boulevard, which is, there's a Lutheran church there. It used to be Lutheran. And I came all the way, on, way down Bittenspur, all the way down Old Shell to Broad. And I measured uh, some of the walls along the way. And for instance, um, Spring, the gates of Spring Hill have a six foot wall. Basically, everything along there had a six foot wall, with the exception of a brand new uh, subdivision right adjacent to Westgate, I think, coming out of Country Club Estates. Excuse me. And they have an eight foot wall. Um, I would say as an owner, my family has owned the property, as I said, since 1955, I think. Um, we have, we've never been broken into. None of my neighbors have been broken into. We have no concern about a wall, but for the aesthetics of the subdivision, which is otherwise not walled except one lot, the next street down, which is Bellevue Circle to the east, has a wall along their property line that's the side of their home, and that won't show on here, I don't think. Um, but anyhow, um, the aesthetics of it, 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 anyhow, the safety of it, to me, six feet's enough, and particularly given the fact that they're gonna take it from eight feet and then turn the corner and go a little bit, it's not defined, I don't believe, a little bit eight feet still, and then drop to six and to four feet. So by the time they get 75 feet from Bellevue Lane, I may be wrong on the 75 feet. You had a um, diagram of their house a few minutes ago. I, with my poor eyes, I couldn't read that distance to the garage, which would be just above the E and the N in Bellevue Lane. There's a property line, you know, yeah, that line right there, I'm not sure. I, I was thinking it was 75, thanks, uh, Adam, I appreciate that. So, um, you know, it just, by the time it gets to that point, it's going to have dropped down, I think, to four feet. Um, by the time it gets to the front of the house, right? And so the eight feet for a safety just along Bellevue Lane, to me personally, is um, is more than aesthetically and more than safety-wise that needs to be. And again, we the only issues we've ever had are actually are people coming from the golf course at the Country Club property. So they've not been coming. I mean, there are people who wander up and down, but 
they've not, you know, they've not come into our yards, and we've had n neither of the houses, my parents nor my home, that I built on that lot, um, nor the neighbors that I'm aware of, and I've asked different ones of them have had any sort of safety issues in terms of break-ins or, you know, somebody might have car trouble and come to your door. That's, you know, that happens anywhere in town, I think. But uh, I'm open to any questions. How close is, or excuse me, how tall is the one wall or fence that you referenced that's within On oh, Bellevue Circle? Yes, well, that part, our, our Bellevue Lane is pretty much, well, where we are, Bellevue Lane is um, on the same plane as Airport Boulevard, okay? When you get down to Bellevue Circle, which is the next street to the east toward McGregor, um, yeah, that one on the, it would be the um, right there to the left. That one right there. That lot has the wall. Is that the one you're talking about? I didn't see the pictures. That's okay. I only I only saw the cast. I, I didn't know. If, I was asking if you measured. Because you said you measured. I didn't measure that wall. I went up and then came. I knew there were a bunch of walls coming down Bittensburg. Okay. And um, so I measured that. But, but that one is, it would have been hard for me to measure, frankly, because it's probably six feet off the off Airport Boulevard, and then it goes up. So, I mean, I would have been standing on Airport Boulevard trying to measure it. But it's a, it's a I don't know how to describe it. The topography is different in the two places. Um, I would guess theirs is probably more for sound because nobody would scale that hill to go up to the house. But I don't, I don't know. Do we have that. any other questions of the board? For Ms. I have a question. Yes, sir. In regards to, uh, we we'll say, Bellevue Lane, what is the footage? When we talk about safety now, and maybe having a blind. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the drawing, the, the curvature part of Bellevue. How many feet is that before we hit airport? Or, uh, Bellevue Lane's 30 feet wide, and there's a there's a strip of land on uh, just below where it says Bellevue Lane that's 10 feet wide. So from his property line to Airport Boulevard is 40 feet, you know, approximately. From his property line to the other side of Bellevue Lane would be the 30 feet and then a 10-foot strip. Now, that strip doesn't really show it, but there's a hedge. And that's a whole other story. <laughs> but there's a hedge that goes from the entrance to Bellevue Lane at that bottom right corner of the yellow. From the entrance of Bellevue Lane, um, that's okay, all the way up to, okay, so his is in yellow. Oh, thank you. That helps. Okay, so that's my vacant lot to the left of what you're looking at right there. And then my house is next. And then those trees that are down on Airport Boulevard at the end of Bellevue Lane. So the hedge runs all the way from the entrance to Bellevue Lane, all the way from the right at that end, all the way beyond those, about to where those trees are. That's where the city, that's where we put our trash and stuff, a little to the left of that one. Um, it's about, my husband planted it in 1989 when we built our house there. And it's probably, you measure measure six feet i don't know how long i don't know how tall that edge is but it's it's tall it's it's well, developed my question was in regards to entering and exiting your lot or the next a vacant lot next to your house yes sir on Bellevue, is there enough space or how how wide is that area that a car or whatever vehicle could come out and still with it with his fence there and still be safe you come out my driveway or you come out Bellevue lane about Bellevue, Bellevue Lane. How, Bell, how wide is that? Bellevue Lane's 30 feet. Basically, two cars can pass. I mean, you, you don't... That's, that's, that's what I mean. They can pass, but, I mean, carefully. They can pass one another. So, two car lengths. But as you pull out and look to your left, there's some azaleas there, and above the B, slightly to the left, in Bellevue Lane, there's some old azaleas, the 1950s, and then there's a driveway, and then there's the yellow... A west boundary line of their property. So the driveway is not technically on the property line, but five okay. feet, okay. four I'm feet. Not, I'm not sure if this will answer, further answer your question, but next to Caroline's house, going that way, there's another house. Bellevue dead end of their driveway or that uh, Slightly line? end of their yeah. driveway. Yeah. So there's no traffic coming from the west. Um, if, since you were asking about line of sight and safety. Oh, yeah. Bellevue Lane dead ends into that, into that property. And then you've got Lakewood subdivision. And there's a, there's a wall, long people, a wall between Bellevue Heights is the subdivision that we're in and Lakewood. So 
you, where you see there's a swimming pool on the left, kind of halfway up, that's all Lakewood. That line of trees going north, essentially north. Yeah, that's that's the, you know, it's not technically the property line, but that's Mr. practically Chairman, speaking. Yes. Um, Caroline, so your driveway is the last no. access point? No. No. There. Take, take his western boundary. Oh. My house is there. I understand. Okay, okay the lot's there. More. That's the Horner's house, and it does not have access to. Oh, so that's what I mean. Airport Your house to the west is is the is the westerly most that accesses off Bellevue. Correct. The Horner's. Yeah. Yeah, that property. Okay. It has a little curve in it. Yeah. Bellevue Lane ends kind of up into the but corner. Their driveway is in that curve. Yeah. All the, yeah. All got the way it. all the way around their house. Actually. Okay. All right. I got a question for staff. Um, so they come straight out. Okay. They come straight out down Bellevue, and then we and our lot and the officer okay. of the climb Peters have to turn, you know, make a left turn on the Bellevue and come out at the east. Okay. I noticed end. in the report that uh, traffic didn't say anything. Um, I, I know. I just can't see <laughs> over there. Um, we just want you to do something about the hot rodders on Airport Boulevard. That's another topic. And I'm curious that they maybe didn't bring up any stacking or, or – uh, uh, I know there's not a lot of traffic, but um, if you're 10 feet off the property line, um, would there be any issue with queuing if they had two cars that were trying to get in their gate at the same time? I'm just trying to figure out. Uh, that was the question I was going to have for the applicant about the depth of the gate okay. from Bellevue. It fits back farther, doesn't it? You'll have to come down here. I... You want me to say it for him? No. It okay. Has to come, from <laughs> well, I mean, come on, Karen. Right. You are. Our intent is to have the gate set back even further at the wall. The picture. What, 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 what is the dimensions? Uh, how far back? Well, we hadn't drawn up specific, um, you know, plans, but we would want to have enough room for a car to be lengthwise in the driveway without being. What is the normal stacking for a gate off of a? Four. So that's at least one car. Okay. No. We had planned on setting it back roughly ten feet. Because the right away starts at the at the edge of the of the asphalt no okay the right-of-way there there's no hard and fast rule of right-of-way ends at the edge of the pavement right. or the back of the sidewalk the right-of-way ends where private property begins which he would have on his survey okay. uh, the one thing I would say is we've had a lot of discussion between the applicant, a resident, and the board um, regarding stepping down the fence, which if the board looks to approve it, that's fine. But as submitted, it shows eight feet all the way back. So if the board looks to wants anything other than that, that probably needs to be okay. discussed. Mr. Chairman, I got another question for the applicant. Um, the setback's 10 feet and uh, work. No, setback's 25. Setback's 25, you're asking for 10 um, because it would encroach more on your yard. Well, who's asking for it? Uh, uh, hold on, Caroline. We got, we got a whole. So, my question would be um, would you be um, um, willing to compromise on that setback and maybe go back? Toward your house just a little bit further uh, than the 10, maybe another, maybe another five, seven feet. Um, we really want this wall, so I would say whatever it takes to get it. To no, you. I uh, thank you, but my question is more about just from your perspective. Mm -hmm. Would that really change anything from what you're trying to accomplish? I'm just trying to give and take a little bit. So setting it back 15 or 15, 17, 17 feet, feet, right? I mean, it would. I would have to. We'll get it, but I think that we would, we could certainly live with okay, that. Okay, I've got a question for, for Ms. Hines. 
Can you come back up? Uh, you're the only uh, affected party that has shown any, any, you know, any interest. So if that were to happen, what I just suggested, would that, would that help alleviate any of your concerns? Sure. Okay. Sure. That, and then the height of the wall along Bellevue Lane. And that's aesthetics vis-a-vis -vis that he's going to immediately, not immediately, I don't know how many feet back, but he's going to step it step down to six time. and four. Well, I could hop over a four foot. So yeah. okay. that's, right, and you. it's an aesthetic thing with the, going with the covenant of the subdivision. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is that it for me? <clears throat> Hold on. Any other questions from the board? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate your time. All right. Thank you. Is there anyone else? That would like to speak on this application in favor anyone in opposition today okay that concludes our public hearing on the application uh, sounds like the applicants willing to work with us on the setback um, I'm not sure the height has necessarily been totally justified maybe a six foot might be better fit for this resi residential area and then the end at the, uh, I guess the edge of the house, because you're not trying to block anything on the golf course side. Um, Mr. Chairman? Or maybe even step down to four feet as you get closer. Yes. Um, again, I'm not making the suggestion, just throwing it out there. Um, there was a willingness to compromise on, on the setback kind of in between the two, and I don't want to sound trivial, but um, um, between six and eight is seven. I don't know if that would help any. Um, probably reduce the cost by, by some minimal amount. Um, and since Ms. Hines is the other real stakeholder, um, would the applicant um, still feel as comfortable with that scenario? Um, we never give you an opportunity for a rebuttal, but I don't think there's a reason to have a rebuttal from a time standpoint. I don't really have a rebuttal. I think you want to come back up? I, I did want to go out of order Sorry. with Wayne. I don't think I really have a rebuttal. I, I, I believe, if I'm not misunderstanding, that Caroline is okay with us having a wall, is just trying to get the details. Right. Um, Correct. And again, we are certainly willing. We don't want to cause any problems for our neighbors, obviously. Uh, we just would like to have uh, the wall if we can have it, and uh, uh, want to do that to, again, to try to keep everybody happy, certainly. Okay. Anyway, I wanted to give you the opportunity for rebuttal. I apologize. All right. Once again, uh, Mr. Chair, I have a quick question for yeah. staff. What, I think in the rendering mm -hmm. it showed some like caps on the columns. Where are you measuring the six, seven, eight feet? From is it the, just the bulk of the fence, or if they do a decorative cap on it, is that is that where it's measured from? We didn't have those renderings. Basically, what we have is the site plan, which shows an eight feet eight foot wall all the way around the property. And it's really just a curiosity question. Um, if this drawing were to be submitted, we would go by the the maximum height. So the columns yes. cap would be the... Yes. Okay. Well, uh, it was just a... We've concluded the public hearing. Now, I, I don't want to be rude. I, I just, I guess, clarity for the applicant right. and for myself to understand where you measure from. Now, you have to remember, this is a variance. The board has a lot of leeway. If you're wanting seven foot for the wall and then an allowance for the, the pillars, yeah. you know, you can do that. Um, again, you know, in looking, if the board's looking to approve uh, and staff will interject and guide as able, uh, we need to know where on, you know, where you're looking to step back to and are you looking to step down and things of that nature. Okay, any further questions or comments from the board? All right, Chair, entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, yes. based upon the uh, uh, conversations, which I appreciate everybody, um, 
my motion is to allow the construction of the fence with it being set back 15 feet instead of 10. Um, and with the height being um, seven feet with an allowance of six or eight inches for the for the capitals or the little tops of the fence. So the so the solid wall of the fence to be seven feet and then step back 15. And also that the as it goes down on the east west property lines as shown on the little drawing that he gave us that it starts stepping down um, uh, right near his his house or uh, um, because we've got because we actually need to 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 state at what point and so it won't be nebulous is there a point where i know we're in this session here but is there a point where you in your mind had had wanted to start the step down as you go to the north okay well then let's do that let's say that the eight foot goes back 33% and then correspondingly the thirds as you go toward the golf course. Mr. Metcalf, yes. seven feet? No, 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 stepping it down from seven to six to four. Six to four. Okay, thank you. Okay, are we clear on the motion? Okay, um, do we have a second? Thank you, Mr. Davis. The one thing um, I just want to make sure that the board's finding variance will not be contrary to the public interest and their special conditions that will result in an unnecessary hardship. And the and spirit three. shall be observed. That is correct. Thank you, sir. Okay, I have a motion with a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? A okay, motion carries. Thank you. All right, we'll go to the next application, which is 6517, 6460, 6076, regarding 5340 Hawks Mill Road and 4370 Range Line Road. Yes, sir. Good evening. Uh, my name's Pat Busby. Since uh, 2017, we've had the Bobcat of Mobile at 5340 Hawks Mill Road. The, uh, and uh, you're asking a frontage landscape variance? Yes, sir. I mean, as a as a retail business that sells heavy equipment, we have to have that equipment displayed. The for many years uh, prior to a fire, we had a fire on December 30th of 2020 that totally destroyed the building. So we had to rebuild. The building and we've had equipment parked on the asphalt paving along Ridgeline service road this property starts on Halls Mill Road and runs all the way through to the service road yeah, that's, uh, the uh, our plans were to make no changes to the asphalt and equipment parking that we'd been doing you know, the entire time on Ridgeline Service Road. Uh, the parking of the equipment along Ridgeline Road never reaches the drainage pond and is nowhere near the reconstruction work that was done on the building. During reconstruction, the City of Mobile Engineering Department for stormwater requirements requested removal of the asphalt to make the area along Ridgeline Service Road permeable so water would flow through it. Uh, we saw cut and removed the asphalt to meet the engineering department requirements at that point. However, post completion of the reconstruction, when we went to the City of Mobile Permit Department for a certificate of occupancy, we were told we had two options, remove the equipment from the unpaved parking area that we had made permeable with rock along Rangeline Service Road or pave that area, which we never wanted it unpaved, but we, we did to meet the requirements. Uh, it's our understanding that 
the engineering, planning, and zoning is happy with what we agreed to a more permeable service there along Ridgeline Service Road. Uh, however, where we are today is due to the inability to resolve that issue, we've been uh, unable to receive a permanent certificate of occupancy, and we're operating under a temporary certificate of occupancy. The temporary certificate of occupancy expires June 25th. And our request of the board today is to get the frontage landscaping variance, allow us to continue to park equipment where we have since 2017, and get a permanent certificate of occupancy on or before June 25th. Okay. This topic has been to the board before, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. That's correct. Uh, what he was before the board for previously is more were setback issues along Halls Mill Road. There was a fire, the building burned down, construction did not commence within an adequate amount of time. So the board granted those setback variances. They continued with construction when it came time for the uh, inspections for the certificate of occupancy. The area up here along range line slash US 90, uh, the landscaping area that had been shown on the permits had become aggregate. And so it is deficient of landscaping, hence this application. I thought they had uh, surface. They did. The, the, the first one was surface, Mr. Chairman, because it was in B3, and that it, was the first one. It, the surface is not the issue it's that the surface expanded beyond no, i was answering the chairman's question okay that no yes it did require because it was in b3 and so they uh, um the variance was for uh um, surface uh, for, for stone in the very beginning before they i, I remember it. something about this. okay well but but what has this before the board today is the areas here were shown as green space and now they're aggregate. It's a landscaping variance. It's not yeah. a parking variance. Right. Okay. Ms. Chairman, yes. uh, staff, um, how about further down on the hall? See, we have two frontages here. Correct. Is the city um, considering it to be two frontages? Yes. Okay, with landscaping on both sides. Correct. Okay, so they've already got adequate i guess for the south side they're it's, good on one side <laughs> okay so they're getting they're getting pinched by be, having two frontages okay all right thank you okay any other questions any questions of the applicant like i say we we wish just to say that we would rather it be paved but we were trying we you know, paved or, or stone we'd rather it have been paved because it, we had it paved but then we tore up the paving and put you know, stone in and put stone in to meet the engineering but requirement. in the area that was supposed to be landscaped excuse me i don't know that i believe some pavement came up but the area with aggregate expanded it expanded okay is there enough where's the detention now could you show the full picture yes sir that the bottom where that big spot right in the middle is the detention pond. Like and, there? And, and, and where we're at, we're talking about the area at the top where the aggregate is, is what we were told to make permanent. So the detention pond is above ground right there in front? Yes, sir. Wow. And y'all had to create that? Yes, sir. Whew. Y'all lost a lot of parking lot. Yes, sir. Margaret? Yeah, if that's the tension down there in the, okay, that, that grass area? Okay. So it, that retention is grass now? Yes, sir. Okay. Further requirements. Is All that, right. is, is the grass area and the detention, can it count toward uh, green space? That's what I was getting. Yeah, it is 12%. 
Um, I was just confirming. It can count towards the total yeah. landscaping, but you have so much of your total that has to be within the frontage. I understand. Okay. All right. Any other questions of the board? Oh, yes, Mr. Matt. One more question. Speaking of that, that's critical. If they, if, if the total percentage that's required, not front and back, total percentage, do we have a calculation that tells us if they don't, if they don't do the landscaping where they're asking to on the north side, taking in the detention area, does that provide enough percentage of the entire site to be, to be landscaped? trying to see if it's just a matter of percentages of frontage to, to rear or to side. I think I understand what you're asking, but at the end of the day, the problem is we don't have any calculations of what we've lost here. It wasn't included. I, I have, a, so if I look at the city GIS from 2017, which was before the building caught fire, and that's what building structure triggered compliance right that is correct yeah. so if i look at the 2017 aerial it the asphalt coverage is no different from what i can tell that's 22. no I, you can go back to 17. oh okay um doesn't look any it's not drastically different and so i feel like they're getting penalized for their building at the design. Yeah. as you can see the building is a long way away from you know, right. And, the, the new and I get, you know, I, and I just don't, I, I don't think that you expand, you know, I don't, I'm not seeing any evidence that you expanded where the asphalt was with additional gravel. Mr. Morris, you had a question? I'm, I'm just trying to get a better understanding of the service road side. Because I, I frequent that area a lot. I see you did. Uh, the city is requesting what, more landscaping on that side? the city requires 12 percent landscaping for the whole site which is a large site but of that 12 percent 60 percent has to be in the front setback they have a double fronting lot um they had they had the fire so that when they rebuilt because they didn't rebuild within the time period, they had to comply. So that's what's triggering all of this. That's what triggered the setback request last year. The reason why this didn't get caught last year is because the plans that were submitted for permitting illustrated this area here as landscaping. So they had compliant plans they just didn't have compliant as built at the end of course the the shrubs or landscaping shown there is that in place there are let me say this i i can't i can't i have not counted the trees to say what well all of that some so yeah, yeah, yeah. it mean, does, I, does what's on Hall's Mill equal 60% of 12%? That, that's what I would say. I recognize that it took us a while to rebuild. We were in the middle of a thing called COVID, COVID. that you know, created significant issues okay. on labor right. material. So, Mr. Chair, I mean, asking the applicant, so the, along the Hall's Mill frontage, you have a, the detention pond, you really have a double detention pond where it fronts Hall's Mill. I mean, I've by there a number of yes, it, yes yeah, so that that's all green space that counts towards the front end. yes sir. i just Good. just looked at it a few minutes ago yeah. with all the grass is growing we keep it yeah but it's, it's a big like i say we did lose significant parking but. okay any other questions or comments all right do we have anyone in the audience that has comments to add
regarding this application? Anyone in opposition to that? All right. That will conclude our public hearing on the application. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mr. Sure. Chairman? Yes. I, I think that um, from a hardship standpoint, um, I think what we're probably dealing with here is is he got trapped in COVID and with supply chains. I mean, we all know how difficult it was to um, even get building materials or get a metal building put on the ground. Some of them took eight, nine, ten months just to get here. Had that situation not been, who is, which is totally out of everyone's control, um, I feel certain that with the contractors that they had, the size company that Lyle is, um, and with their need to be in, back in business, that they would have had that thing up had that not been the case. So my opinion is that there is a hardship here and that, uh, that we should, uh, should maybe have that maybe our number one issue. Okay. Chairman, do I take that as a motion, Mr. Metcalf? That was not a motion. It was a, up for discussion. All right. Well, Chair, entertain a motion. We've got a pretty good understanding of the facts. I make a motion to approve the application as written. Second. I have a motion to approve with a second. Any further discussion? I'm go I'm getting ready to do it. All right. That's right. Um, in the considerations numbers one through three, um, the variance will not be against public interest. Special conditions do exist, and the spirit of the chapter shall be observed. Call for a vote real quick. All those in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, we're going to take just a 10-minute recess. Uh, one of the board members asked that we take a break. Then we'll reconvene. Nine years. Getting busy again. <laughs> yeah, got two or three big projects underway. Well, we're new medical school, a new medical facility, physician offices, clinics, things like that. And there's probably another building coming up that I haven't seen the plans yet. Performing arts. Probably over a billion dollars construction. I think we're getting ready to do another 300,000 or 300 million. So keep the economy going. It's, it's grown. Now we're going to take taking over a province. I said, then now we're looking to expand and take over Providence. So, well. It ain't official until October, so I say, look. No. Just get the 
it says there. Yeah, that'll put us over 10,000 people. Seven thousand seven hundred ninety as of today. Yeah, they say it'll be a year and a half before we're really going to see a change. Yeah, yeah they're happy. very excited and very excited. That kind of ties in with our medical school and nursing home. Where we took where we tore down the old Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Metcalf, you wanna join us again? <laughs> I was talking to Jerry Bird. Y'all had that associate there from last meeting. Yeah. All right, we're gonna reconvene. And we're on application 6518. This is uh, 100 North Franklin Street. Good afternoon. Your name and address, please. Hi. I am Alexandra Vassar. I'm with Morrison Hirschfield. We are the site acquisition firm that's been engaged by Dish Wireless uh, for this site. Uh, Dish is proposing installation of antennas and associated equipment on the rooftop of the building at 100 North Franklin Street. Um, the antennas are to be mounted to the existing penthouse wall and an existing platform on the roof. Um, and all the proposed equipment is to be painted to match the existing building and positioned so as not to be visible from the right of way. Um, dishes installation will provide necessary wireless coverage to the area. There are currently no other buildings or towers of sufficient height that will provide uh, Dish Wireless the necessary coverage. Um, they are building on a network that will create competition among wireless service providers and that will drive down costs for consumers and deliver high-speed wireless services for businesses, schools, and the general community in Mobile. And the installation of this network will also greatly enhance emergency communications. The site is in a flood zone, so. Okay, and we were all Board members were provided, I guess, drawings and some of the information. And uh, Steph explained this is um, requires a special exception variance because of the T-5-1 district requirement. That's correct. Special exception, we went through this uh, last month with the veterinary facility with the outdoor runs. Uh, special exceptions are use-based. They are not a hardship-based. And you have the criteria by which you review the application. Okay, and we have comments, at least from one or more applicants. Yes. Main, uh, um, and, parties. and I don't want to, uh, if you notice on the comments you have, uh, comments uh, on this application, you have two different ones, but then you also have an email from one of the same commenters where she kind of works her way through and as proposed, I think the words are in a font too small for me to read without my glasses. Uh, uh, looking at the diagram, that looks good. Nothing like those towers. So. Okay. Uh, seems like it hasn't been that long since we've had a similar request for this area. Maybe a year, year and a half ago. One was on the merchant's building, I believe. That's probably a couple of years. Well, one was on top of the merchant's annex building. One was for the Alabama Power Tower. But this is the first application under the new Unified Development Code in the Downtown Development District. And that's why it's a special exception rather than a variance. So um, it's been through all the required staff reviews in terms of the Consolidated Review Committee. So because it's uh, telecom applications are broken out into four types, class one, class two, class three, and class four, 
this was determined to be a class two permit, uh, which is something that cannot be allowed just by right. It does require a minimum level of review by the Board of Adjustment prior to it being approved or denied for installation. I know in the past we also looked at existing, coexisting on it units that are in a geographic area based on propagation and all that. Well, do we not look at that anymore? That would apply. However, there are no, quote, cell towers in downtown. It would be using existing buildings for mounting. And in some of the examples that were provided in one of the emails we received, um, one of the towers that was shown was the Alabama Power. And that's solely for Alabama Power use. Right. Another one that was shown was the uh, tower that's on top of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers building, probably completely uh, regulated for federal use. And then the other one of, was just a small antenna that's on top of this same existing building that's not in any way a cell-type facility. So. Okay. So from a pro coverage standpoint, we don't have anything in this area that you could share? That's correct. All right, questions of the board for the applicant? Okay. All right, thank you. Do we have anyone in the audience either in favor or opp opposition to this application today? All right, that'll conclude our public hearing. Um, discussion of the board? Okay, with that, Chair, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chair, I motion to approve as the applicant states. Second. Okay. Any conditions as per the drawings and the information that was provided? Correct? I don't see any. No, sir. Okay. Margaret? We need to kind of go through uh, the considerations because these findings do need to be incorporated in improving the special exception. Kurt, can you help with that? In the staff report on page five, uh, about halfway down, you have approximately 12 items that need to be reviewed. Uh, these would be similar to the findings of fact for your variance applications, but in this case, it's 12 items for special exception. The first item would be determining that the proposed use is in harmony. Uh, second one would be that the proposed the use at the proposed location shall not result in undue adverse effect. Uh, the proposed use um, will not will be. Will be adequate to serve by. It takes the village. Yes. And my mic. Proposed use is consistent with all applicable requirements of the chapter. The proposed use is compatible with the character of the neighborhood, especially since they will be painting it to match the building. Uh, the proposed use will not impede the orderly development. Seven, the proposed use will not have, um, will, will have no more adverse effects on the allowed to even talk about when it comes to cell service, correct? As of, that's correct, as it relates to cell. Um, it will not, uh, will not cause uh, any traffic issues. It will uh, not, it will minimize any impact on stormwater facilities since it's an existing building. Uh, the use will be adequately served by water and sewer. Not noxious or offensive. And it will not be detrimental or endanger public health. Okay. All right. Thank you. No, no, all right. Ms. Carroll, you got this? So the motion is made without any of those adversely impacted, correct? And I have a second. Who was the second on that motion? Mr. Morris? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries, thank you. All right.
right, we're on application 6519, 6300 McKenna Drive. Mr. Bird, you're up. Name and address for the record. Good afternoon. This will be easy for you. Like last one? <laughs> well, like last, <laughs> without my book. Jerry Bird, Bird Servan, 2609 Halls Mill Road for the, for the applicant. Um, adds Coastal Kitchen. Staff says their catering service. That sounds kind of large. He refers to himself more as a personal chef. Mr. Moore is the chef. He is the only employee. He was located at a restaurant building and someone purchased that building and didn't want him utilizing it. He contacted or somehow got in touch with Corpus Christi. Their kitchen facility was not being used still not being used. Um, he operates, he set up operations there, then came down to get a building per, uh, business license. And they said, well, Corpus Christi is on R1 and you need a business B1, B2, two um, classification. That's why we're here. <clears throat> he and of course, church is in agreement. He's there. Church did sign the application. If they didn't want him to be there, they wouldn't have signed and we wouldn't be here today. But he goes to his menu is posted online Wednesday, Thursday, something. His customers pick out what they want, purchases the food, goes there on Friday afternoons, starts work on preparing the food comes back on Saturday, works on Saturday, preparing the food. Sunday afternoons after the service is over with, <clears throat> works in the kitchen, and the, the meals are prepared and put into a uh, commercial cooler, about 40 degrees. On Monday, they are delivered out to the various customers. Uh, no pickup. I mean, doesn't interfere with any of the church or the school uh, uh, operations that they have. And um, he just needs that. But there's no, going to be no changes to the outside parking, landscaping, no changes to the building inside or outside. It's just utilizing um, kitchen that wasn't being used. And that's what they're there for. Okay, has the kitchen been maintained for fire code and all the other I suppose, or they wouldn't. You and the exhaust systems, the yeah, hood, whatever. I'm sure building inspection departments check into that, or we'll check into it. We'll have to have you talk. At the oh, okay. sir. All right. Any questions for Mr. Bird? Yeah, you come on down, sir. Yeah, if you got <coughs> information to add. This is, this is Mr. Moore. Yeah, your name and address, sir. Add Moore in uh, 6300 McKenna Drive. Tad's Coastal Kitchen. Um, I have been inspected with the health department. I have my county business license. Um, the city did issue me uh, my old business license until I got this taken care of. And so we're above board and we're doing everything properly. So. Once again, any questions for the board? I've seen this kitchen. I've spent a little bit of time in there myself. Okay. So. Um, my only question was whether or not the system is maintained yes. as per code requirements. Yep. All right. And how long has the church just continued using the facility? Well, they they have a service that brings food in for the school for the kids, but they don't use the kitchen at all. So they, they just use the cafeteria. They use the cafeteria. Basically, the front of the kid the front of the kitchen. The kids walk in and get the fast food that's delivered by the service. Okay, and at no point you're serving the church or any of their operations? Uh, what, I don't like, like no. I, I, during I, Lent, Fridays, or any other mm -hmm. activities? Okay. All right. Any questions once again? All right. Do we have anyone here in support or opposition? All right. That'll conclude.
include the public hearing on the application. Uh, comments to the board? Okay, I have a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. Findings. All right, that concludes uh, motion carries. Yes. For staff and council, um, procedural slash legal. It seems ridiculous for us to have to say those words. Speaking for myself, if I make a motion to approve, I've taken all those one, two, threes, and fours into, con into consideration. Is it just a suggestion or is it legal? Why do we have to go through the, the time each time and say and read those, those items? Obviously, if we had a problem with them, we wouldn't be making a motion to approve or vice versa. If there's an appeal, it has to be, you have to have findings to grant a variance. Well, but can we come up with a some kind of something to say that we all know what that means? Maybe, maybe. So that so that it'll hold up in court without having to say all that crap? We haven't discussed this, but maybe something like in the staff report A is A would list them for approval well, and then D so we can for, say for denial and you say subject sec, to yeah, D. comments yeah. approved by a yeah, sure. instead of having because it just seems ridiculous so but but, but i don't want it to be procedurally incorrect or legally incorrect but i think for for it, i'm not speaking it, for everybody but i think everybody here would probably agree well, I like that it seems, oh I like yeah i agree with you yeah. okay. <laughs> no, actually i can, noticed you don't make a motion now that you have to say them <laughs> Jeremy's gone. Um, <laughs> Actually, so we, I, no, I agree. I agree. It'd okay. be nice if we could reference. Speed it up. If approved, <laughs> findings. We'll if That's yeah. fine. Okay. Findings. I like that idea. Thank you. All right. All right. We're on application 6520. Oh, you're fine. Your name and address. Uh, Jared Fulton, 2421 2nd Avenue North, Birmingham, Alabama. All right. And you're looking for a front yard, building story height, and this is an existing building? Yeah, so the existing building is that 12, almost 13,000 square foot building on the corner at 500 St. Louis Street. So really the issue is the addition there. Uh, on, the, on the west side, there's a 60 foot um, parking bay. We're adding the addition, um, that addition Shown that 18 feet setback. So initially, we so this is we're working with uh, Stephen McNair on historical preservation in, in town to submit for uh, national historic tax credits. We receive approval of those credits based off the current design. Um, so their concern was that this addition was when we originally showed it was too close. They wanted to kind of maintain the corner of their original building and express that more than the addition. So that was kind of the, the reason for pushing the building back to the, their pillars along that side. They asked us to push it back to that first pillar. Uh, the second variance we're asking for is a uh, height variance on the, on the building between the first and second floor. Currently we have 11, this is a little two story addition. So there's a, there's a little balcony piece in the front and then the back, I'd say, half is a, a smaller uh, second floor addition to get to that balcony. Uh, the, the current, so floor to floor is 11 feet, but kind of the appearance of, you know, once you get the balcony, the solid balcony there, the appearance has the appearance of 14 foot tall uh, front. You don't enter that piece, that piece, you know, we're actually entering the building on the existing building side entry was previously so you never really experienced that uh, as you come in this is a side piece okay 
All right, questions of the board for the applicant? And they had, they had we, we originally had this building tower too, but there's some clear stories on the existing building. They made us lower it to be the lowest. They didn't want it to be the addition to be any higher than the existing building. So this primarily has to do with the addition. Everything else about the existing structure, obviously, you can't, you know, unlikely would want to modify as far as height or setbacks. All right, questions of the board? All right, we have one individual in the back. Are you in support or opposition? Just here for moral support? Okay. All right. Uh, once again, one last chance for the board. All right, that'll conclude our public hearing on this application. Chair, entertain a motion. If you do make a motion, keep in mind the findings of fact, either in support or opposition. I'll make a motion to approve, subject to the considerations that the variance will not be contrary to the public interest uh, special petitions exist. Will not result, or yeah, will result in an unnecessary hardship. Fair chapter shall be observed, and substantial justice are done to the applicant. Did I cover it? Yeah, very good. I can see why we should get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. A second. I have a motion and second. All those in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? We didn't have any public comment on that one either, right? Okay. I want to make sure of that. All right. Thank you. Good luck to your project. All right. We need to consider the um, schedule for 2023 through 24. Uh, unless somebody just sees something that stands out here, I'll entertain a motion to approve the schedule for the next. I have a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. Second. All those in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 All right. Any other business for today? Mr. Anderson. Mr. Anderson, anything on your radar? All right. With that, 